All right, so today we're gonna to be checking out a tool called MediCat USB, which is an IT tool that I think everyone should have. So let's check it out. Now, MediCat USB, I consider that as a disaster recovery tool because it has everything that you need to clone a hard drive, repair a hard drive, recover files, uh, antivirus, partitioning tools, like tons of stuff that an IT professional would need to fix a computer. Now, there is similar tools called the Hiren Boot CD, but this is basically that on steroids. Now, a couple of years ago, I did a video on installing Ventoy, where you could load ISO images to install into PCs without having to flash a USB drive. You could just pop the ISO into USB. Well, this takes that process and takes it 10 steps forward. It still uses Ventoy as its base, but it has a lot of other tools wrapped on top of Ventoy for allow for all these IT utilities. Now I did do a live stream last week, um, basically reviewing this desktop, which is Ubuntu 23.04, which didn't go as planned. But one of the things I did show on stream was the MediCat USB tool. And you guys were all so interested about this. So I definitely had to create a video. Now to jump into my desktop, this is still Ubuntu and I did manage to get it to install. So I'm gonna go through this whole process of all the plugins I got and everything, probably in a video form in the future, but yeah. This is the website that you could download MediCat and basically you can go to downloads and download off the torrent or you can download direct link. But also keep in mind, you have to use the installer. If you try to copy all the files over to the USB yourself, you're gonna run into issues. So try to use the installer, especially if you're gonna do this, try to use it on a Linux because Windows have uh, their Windows Defender and stuff like that that will stop certain files from running because it does use PowerShell. But yeah, there is an installer video, watch it because it actually goes through all the steps on how to install this through Windows and everything. So yeah, I'm not gonna make a video on that, but he does have a really good video describing how to do it. So we're gonna jump into booting the USB. All right, so if you know your boot up prompt on any motherboard, it would be delete or F9, F10 or whatever it is. On Asus is F8. So I'm just gonna boot into the USB. So here's the prompt that I have. And here are all the tools that you can actually boot into. To start off, we have antivirus. So we have malware bytes and we can boot into a Windows environment that has malware bytes in there. Uh, we have backup and recovery. I've actually used AOMI, if, if that's how you pronounce it, uh, backupper and their partition manager. So it's actually a pretty reliable tool for this, but there's a few other ones that if you are more familiar with, like Norton Ghost or Semantic Ghost now, or Rescuezilla. Uh, if you are familiar with these tools, you could. it's in this USB already. Uh, going back out, we have boot repair. So if you run into UFI or C, uh, BIOS boot issues or CSM boot issues, you can fix it through here or even Grub2 uh, issues, you know. You could all fix that through there. We have diagnostic tools as well. So Memtest, Passmark. Uh, there's uh, something called the Ultimate Boot CD, which has all the tools collected into one that you could test your memory, hard drives, and stuff like that. So if you are running into hardware issues, you can run um, the diagnostic tools. Live operating system, we're gonna come back to this, but I'm gonna show you there are a few, which is Active uh, Data Studio, Mini Windows 10, which is the main thing we're gonna be reviewing after this, and then System Rescue. Going down, we have Partition Tools, we have the AOME Partition Assistant, Part Magic, which I'm familiar with, and Shred OS. Shred OS is interesting if you need to completely wipe data from a hard drive. What it does, it does several passes of formats and then puts zeros into stuff so you can't actually recover any more files. Then you have a few other stuff. I think I've used EaseUS before, EaseUS before, but I don't remember it. My main tools that I've used for disk recovery is AOMI or Parted Magic. Uh, Paragon is another one, but I don't use that. Um, then we have Password Removal for Windows systems. And then you have Windows Recovery. So if you run into Windows 10 or Windows 11 issues, you could just run this Windows Recovery. Now. One thing you gotta keep in mind is that if you look up on top, it actually says MediCat UEFI, and on the top left, it's green with 1.0.91 UEFI. Now, if I go into live operating system and say I wanted to use Active Data Studio, and I click onto this, it's actually gonna give me an error because this is made for BIOS boot and not UEFI. So to fix this, what we need to do is go back into our boot partition. So I'm gonna show you right now, I'm gonna hit F8 a couple of times. And instead of selecting the UEFI boot over here, we would choose the second partition or the second disk like this. Now this will actually load into the BIOS version of the same MediCat. So if you could see, the USB up on top says now BIOS, and on the top left is red with 1.0.91 BIOS. And then this time I could go into live operating system, go back into active, 
And then I could actually load into this operating system because now we're in running in BIOS mode. Now, Active is a pretty interesting software. I don't use this particularly a lot, um, but it has all the tools that you really need to get a system up and running from disaster failure. So you could actually go into here, programs, and there's a lot of stuff like partition manager, partition recovery, undelete, file recovery. Like there's a ton of stuff in here that you could actually use uh, to you know recover our PC. Now, if you're not familiar with their applications, you can always go into documentation and kind of just read their PDFs on how to use the software. Now, I don't particularly use Active. I know it's in here, but I stick to the ones that I know, which is Recuva or I Aomi or stuff like that. So we're gonna jump into the Windows operating system and then I'm gonna show you all the tools that are in there. Again, I'm gonna be booting into UEFI partition so we could just boot right into the Windows 10 mini, a mini Windows 10. And here we go, live USB and make sure it's UEFI. You don't have to, you could actually boot it into both either BIOS or UEFI, but I just prefer UEFI because the operating system that I'm dealing with is UEFI. So that kind of works hand in hand. That's just my thought about it. I think it will work both ways. Now booting into Windows, mini Windows 10 uh, will take maybe three to five minutes depending on the speed of your USB. Now it's gonna boot up and it's gonna do its thing. You literally just gotta sit here and wait until a particular menu pops up or else you're just gonna screw up the whole loading process or make it even slower than it already is because right now it's scrubbing through your entire USB. So as you can see, it just loaded in the the display to change, it's loading in all the stuff. There's still icons that are missing in the desktop that it's gonna load up in a second. But what we're looking for is that menu on the bottom right, which is the portable apps menu. All right, so now that portable apps finally loaded, I'm not gonna open every single application, but I am gonna go through this list and it's a huge list for this mini Windows 10. So let's go through it. Now we do have accessibility where we have on-screen keyboard, stuff like that. We have BIOS utility, so if you do need to flash a BIOS or something's wrong with the BIOS, you could also take care of that as well. Now scrolling down to disk tools, uh, we have CC Cleaner, if you're familiar with that. Disk Defrag, which I don't think we do anymore with SSDs. Um, I don't, yeah, only for spindles, I would say. Then we have FAT32 Formatter, uh, a bunch of other tools. You could even do Crystal Disk uh, Mark just to test your hard drives. Uh, NTFS tools, Recuva. I actually use this tool for data recovery. Um, SD card formatter is another one I use on my desktop just to format SD cards. And then a bunch of other stuff. Now, what I do like is that they actually have this thing called VHD to disk and also disk to VHD. So if you guys are actually converting a computer into an image so uh, you can run as a virtual machine, you can run these actually to convert it or convert it back, which is pretty cool. I've used that tool before and it does work. Uh, we have Windows stats, so you could see where all the big files are on your hard drives. Like there's a bunch of tools and this is just the hard drive section. I'm not even done going down the list. We have drivers, if you have um, driver issues, I guess. Uh, display driver uninstaller. Uh, I'm not too familiar with this because I don't really do these driver things, but I'm pretty sure it will come in handy if you guys are dealing with driver issues. Um, also loaded in with some games, which is evidently probably interesting because I wouldn't play any of these games while I'm trying to do data recovery. Or maybe I will, I don't know. Um, graphic and pictures, we have some little uh, viewers here with paint.net, intraview, uh, PNG optimizer. Uh, hardware tools, we have benchmarking tools, which is ADA64, hardware info, Prime95. Okay, that's pretty interesting. We actually have other tools in the main menu as well, just for benchmarking. Uh, imaging tools, you guys are familiar with Etcher because we use that a lot for Raspberry Pi. Then we have Power ISO, Ultra ISO Rufus, that's another one. I do like this part of it where installing Windows, we do have the media creation tool built into this. So if you needed to create a, a Windows 10 USB device, you can, or Windows 11. We also have Win to Hard Drive or Window ISO Downloader. So there's a bunch of things that you could do on this. Uh, we have some internet stuff as well. Uh, AnyDesk, which, which is basically a team viewer. Uh, Discord, Kitty, uh, Putty, so you can SSH. WinSCP, so you can transfer files. Tor Launcher, interesting stuff. Office. Um, our standard, you know, Word, Notepad++. Now this is the interesting bit because I actually use this a lot, which is ransomware decryption. If you guys remember back in the day where you would get a crypto locked 
um, files where they would encrypt the files. You would have to pay them X amount of crypto and then they will unlock the file for you. Basically, these are what you would use to decrypt it. I don't, depending on which crypt you got, you have to go down the list on what you need to use, but I've done this quite a few times with this utility before. So it's really interesting that it's all baked into this USB. Uh, then we have registry tools, which I'm not familiar with because I mainly just use uh, RegEdit from Windows, but I'm guessing these would optimize or fix registries if you have issues with them. And then you have your security tools, which is um, Malware Hunter, uh, TDS Killer, Hijack This. All right, going down to the utilities, we have our standard 7-zip auto runs. Uh, error lookup which is very useful if you don't know what the blue screen is uh, .NET inspector command prompt uh, defrag process explorer is very interesting but it's not really useful for our use case because we're using not the actual operating system to see what the process is but yeah there's a bunch of stuff over here that you can use i think that's about it as far as going down the list of stuff we have but there is a lot mainly everything that you see um, in this windows 10 mini is going to be in this uh, little portable apps Again, I'm just going through maybe 80% of all the software that we just talked about, but there is a lot of stuff that you are probably more interested in. So you can narrow it down and take a look at that instead. But this is just the Windows 10 mini. Anyway, that is it guys. That is the most useful IT tool or USB that you can have to fix almost any computer. So um, again, all the links will be down in the description below. Or if you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below or on my Discord. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And then I say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.